What's going on, everyone? If you want to come and watch me more than likely bomb at stand-up comedy, I'll be at the Atrium Bar at the Star Casino on Wednesday the 31st of January. Uh, that kicks off at 7 p.m. and then I'll be shooting down to Surface Paradise to the Avenue uh, and doing another set there. That one kicks off at 8 p.m. And then on the 2nd of February, which is the Friday, I'll be back at Matic Brewery at Ashmore. Last time I did that venue, I had a set that was probably in my top five comedy sets I've done so far. So I'm keen to get back there and uh, see what happens on Friday night. Also, we've had another sponsor jump on board this week's episode. We've got our friends at Red Rocket jump on board. That's double D, double T on Red Rocket. So make sure you get the spelling right when you look them up. They've got some pretty cool prints on some shirts, some coffee mugs. They even do car mats and phone cases, which is pretty cool. Uh, I'm wearing one of their shirts in today's episode where it's Joe Biden uh, with his face painted like the Joker, which is a a fun little play on things. But yeah, they've got all sorts of things. Elon Musk, Donald Trump, uh, all sorts of crazy little characters. But yeah, they've got a wide range of things that you can snatch up on the website there at redrocket.myshopify.com. Go check them out and tell them the podcast sent you. going on everyone normally i don't know how to start these ones when i'm here all alone but uh let me just tell you guys what just happened to me uh as we all know i like to dabble in the the world of ice baths and cold plungers at the moment and it's currently monday about 9 a.m ish uh so i've got up i've got my i've done my usual routine i i've been doing the last few weeks uh i just went for a little run and i've come back to to jump in my ice bath after it and uh, because it's nine o'clock, no one else is home here. So normally I just strip off and go in my jocks. And uh, because I was so sweaty and disgusting, I was like, oh, fuck it. I'll just uh, take everything off, right? Because we've said it on here before, the way our block is situated, where we're beside like bushland and then we've got no one out the back of our house. So it's, pretty, it's a pretty, pretty private block, um, which is sick. So I was like, oh, nothing's going to happen. But uh, so I've jumped in and about, I don't know, three minutes into my ice bath, I've, uh, I've gone, what's that sound off in the distance? And I've heard the distinct sound of a lawnmower roaring towards my house. So beside the bushland in our house, there's a little, probably, I don't know, a metre and a half patch of grass that the council comes and mows maybe once every couple of months, I guess. Um and sure enough, as I'm just sitting there stark as in the ice bath, uh, I see the council worker just slowly drive past. And, like, they always do it. They stare into our yard. So I've had to, like, I don't know, I've freaked the fuck out, obviously, like I would because I get awkward in situations like that. So I've uh, started to do my best, like, Navy SEAL impression, right? And I've just sort of tried to hover just below the surface uh so he couldn't see me so i don't know if he saw me or not but uh yeah i was very i was very cautious and scared to get out of the ice bath and walk the couple of meters to the clothesline to get my towel so i don't know we'll see he might uh might drive past tomorrow trying to catch another another glimpse but um yeah that uh that could have gone a lot worse but yeah like i said never know how to kick it off so i just thought i'd come in and let you know what the fuck just happened to me uh a solo episode this week, obviously. Uh, we were meant to do Saturday night, but Nikita decided to have a weekend of spontaneous renovations like she does. So uh, we ended up painting half the house and doing some shelving and all sorts of stupid shit like that. So I was pretty exhausted by the end of it. So I pulled the pin on Saturday night and then uh, we we're supposed to do Sunday night. And then Adrian messaged me about an hour before we were meant to record and goes... I'm going to have to pull the bitch card tonight and uh, say I'm a bit tired from all the, the birthday parties and whatever else he had happening on Sunday, which is cool. Um, so, yeah, figured I'd, I'd make time out of my Monday, come in here, record something. It's probably going to be dog shit like the rest of the solo episodes. I've actually um, – a couple of people have told me they don't mind the solo ones and I don't mind doing them either. It's like a bit of free counselling for me, so – I actually think Mamone probably jinxed us last week when he's like, oh, how do you, how do you like doing solo ones? So fuck you, Mamone. Uh, 
But yeah, appreciate all the uh, all the listens and love on that episode. That was a super fun one to do. Um, yeah, those boys are those boys are great, and obviously. We've had a few guests like that where you just literally, I could just come in, flick the mics on and sit here in silence and they can run the episode, which is fucking sick. But um, yeah, if you haven't already gone and listened to those boys podcast, go and give it a listen. I'm going to hassle them in a few weeks to to come on their one and try and, uh, yeah, I don't know, try and throw a spanner in the works in, in their little podcast down there. But it was it was definitely a fun one. Um but yeah, like I said, just got back for a run before the whole show on the council, my dick in the uh, cold plunge. And the last three weeks or so, I've started to pick up my running a fair bit more, which is which is pretty sick. I actually enjoy running. I think we spoke about that in the early days of the podcast. I don't know why I like it so much. I guess it's why everyone likes it. It's like, I feel like I like it for like a deranged reason. Like I like it because it's, how much pain you can feel like I this, this morning I've got fucking heaps to do besides this podcast today but I was like oh I'll just go and run three k's and then at least I've run sort of thing but um I got like a k and a half in and I was like oh no nah, I'll just keep running I'll just go like five k's and then I got I think I did like five and a half k's which is I don't know it's sort of where I'm sitting as, on my average runs at the moment so um yeah running I think I ran five days last week, which is sick. So trying to get the uh, the numbers back up there and get a little bit fitter and stuff like that. So lost a bit of weight since December um, just by going to the gym a bit harder and introducing running again, which is sick. Um, but, yeah, obviously I still look like a fat fuck. But, anyway, my uh, my running partner for the last two weeks, I don't know if you want to call him – uh, my running motivation or inspiration, whatever the fuck you, you want to say. But uh, I've been listening to audio books while I run recently, which is pretty – I never like uh, – normally I listen to music and stuff like that. And I don't know why, but when I listen to music, I think it's because I know the songs and stuff. So I know – like there's no surprise or anything like that. So I'm just singing along and I'm like, oh, I can just stop. Whereas with an audio book or a podcast – it's just, it's almost taking my brain away from the running and I'm just literally step after step, um, which has been a big help. So, yeah, I've been listening to uh, Cam Haynes's book, Endure, which I've wanted to listen to for the last couple of years. Um, and for those that don't know who Cam Haynes is, he's basically, he's been on Rogan fucking heaps of times, blah, 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 but he's basically a bow hunter from the States, um, which is obviously a super niche lane to be in um but now he's he's made that his livelihood and he's just here's a hot take for everyone uh cam haynes is just a fucking absolute beast um hot take i'd bet nobody's ever said that before but this dude yeah he he's, he's a bow hunter like i said and to prepare for his bow hunts he runs a marathon a day so every single day he goes and runs a marathon he's got this giant boulder that he carries to the top of this giant mountain like almost every day um and on top of that so as rich as he's got from all the fame from rogan and he's obviously i don't know i guess he's the only big bow hunter that i know of that's sort of publicly famous so he's um he's sort of yeah in he's a millionaire from bow hunting but he still maintains a full-time job for the waterboard um, so he works like eight to 10 hours a day, still manages to run a marathon, still manages to shoot his bow all day, every day. Cause he's big on training for all that sort of shit. Um, and he's obviously got a wife and kids and all that sort of shit as well. So it's just, uh, it was a good eye opener for me. Uh, cause I don't know the, the amount of times that I've almost used it as a crutch of, oh, I've got a wife and kids or I've got a full-time job and shit like that. And he's got like a little quote that he's, it's a, um, nobody cares, work harder, which is true. Like I can rock up to an open mic night and people are like, oh, you're trying any new, new shit tonight? And I'm like, oh, nah, fucking the kids were fucking crazy this week or I had to do this at work. And it's like, nobody gives a fuck, like write a new joke, you lazy fuck. So 
I uh, I have been writing a bit more because of that as well, which is which has been sick. I've been getting the kids to sleep and things like that, and then still going in the office at sort of nine nine thirty at night, and punching out an hour uh, hour of writing a day. I'm trying to do because. There was a point where I wasn't writing as much as I should have been and I'm like, why the fuck isn't anything paying off? And it's like, well, you're not putting in the time or effort. So we'll see what comes of it. 99% of it's probably going to be dog shit, but uh, yeah, I might get might get something out of it. I actually wrote – I so I did an hour and a half two nights ago because I decided to – I was looking through my notes and I'm like, I don't know what to fucking write about. And then I saw the title of uh, Truck Story, which is obviously – been fucking punched to death on this podcast um but yeah the the story when i rolled the truck and all that and i've wanted to write like a bit about that trying to trying to fucking i don't know because i feel like like uh and paul even mentioned it last week he's like what would your angle be for like an hour and things like that and i feel like my first hour would almost be like an introduction to me just telling the fucked up stories that have happened and things like that because nobody nobody in the scene has fucking, yeah, rolled a truck, had a home invasion, whatever else I can fucking come up with. But uh, it almost sets me aside from, hey, how's fucking, what do you guys think about Starbucks coffee? Like that sort of lame shit. So I feel like it might be my niche that I need to tap into a little bit more. So, yeah, I, I saw the title, Truck Story, and I just sat down and started writing and I'd fucking, before I knew it, it was like an hour and a half later and I'd, like, there was funny shit coming out of it somehow, just sitting there going through it. So I'm keen to hone that down a little bit more. Obviously, it's a long as fuck story every time I've told it, um, which you don't want to be doing in a stand-up set, but I think there's uh, it's taking a little bit of shape, which is sick. Um but yeah, if you if you haven't read the Cam Haynes book or listened to it, I would highly recommend. Um, the last chapter he talks about, he's, he had a, a friend that sort of got him into bow hunting, and he died on a bow hunt, like fell off the fell off a mountain while chasing a sheep. Um, which fucking it was a pretty hectic. Like I, I've heard the story before on Rogan and listening to Cam Haynes's podcast and shit like that. Um, but just hearing him read the audio book and him like tearing up and shit like that, like it's pretty, pretty hectic. But yeah, go give it a listen. Fucking, you can pay me later, Cam Haynes, for giving you a bit of a shout out on the uh, the podcast. But um, yeah, what else? What else has happened this week? I uh, school started back this week for not only my kids but sort of all kids in Australia. Um, and Nikita also started back work. Uh, actually, no, she started the week before. What the fuck happened there? I don't know. For whatever reason, I had to do school drop off and pick up last week. And I was like, oh, fuck. I, I just hate the whole having to go to school and talk to the parents and be social, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I, uh, I dropped Westy off on Wednesday and he wanted, like, he wanted me to stick around until the school bell went, which was cool. So I'm sitting there pretending to be on my phone doing work just so no one would come and talk to me. And then uh, Westy's off playing with his friends and I'm like, I'm bored. So all his friends are there. So I'm like, oh, Westy, will you be good if I shoot off now? He's like, oh, yeah, I'll be all right. So I'm like, okay, good. Uh, made sure he fucking knew where his lunch and books and all that sort of shit were. He's like, yeah, yeah, all good, Dad. And then I was like, all right, have a good day, walk off. And I got like halfway through the school back to my car and then, like, out of nowhere, I just hear dad and I'm like, oh, fuck. So I didn't. I thought something was wrong. So I've turned around and he's just run after me, like, with no mates or anything. And he just, like, latched on and he's like, love you, dad. Have a good day. And I was like, oh, my God. Like, it was a pretty cool moment as a dad, to, like, for him to ditch his mates and just come and say, like, bye to me and love you because, I don't know, he... I asked him why he did it. He's like, oh, I didn't think my goodbye was good enough the first time. So that was like, I, I got straight onto the phone to Nikita. I'm like, oh, the fucking saddest thing just happened. Like, like it was happy sad. Like I felt like the end of Finding Nemo where Nemo goes off on his school excursion and he runs after his dad to say goodbye. And Nikita's like, you're a little bitch. 
And I'm like, yeah. But uh, yeah, I don't know why shit like that just gets me. Um, not sure if it gets any of you other dads out there, but um, yeah, it was a pretty, pretty cool moment, I thought. Um, we are uh, a couple of, couple of awkward moments this week as well, I guess. I, I know uh, you guys like my little awkward moments. Uh, a lot of people would be like, but you've already had an awkward moment with the council. What else could have happened? Uh, a couple of things. So there's been a, a new shop open near our house, um, near the Bunnings. There's a big sort of, I don't know if you'd call it like a home centre or something, but I don't fucking know. But there was a cheap shop that opened there and Nikita is fucking obsessed with cheap shops like the reject shop and uh, fucking whatever else there is. Anyway, the one near us is called Choice. Uh, there's a few of them around, so it's not like we're special or anything. Anyway, so uh, the kids were at mum's on the weekend and um, Nikita's like, oh, I'm bored, let's go check out Choice. And she can spend fucking hours in these places just looking at the dumbest shit that we don't need, right? And um, yeah, we're, we're looking, we're probably 10 minutes into this cheap shop trip and I'm like, I'm bored as fuck. So she was in like the stationary section and... I, because I was bored, my ADHD as fuck brain was just going everywhere, right? So I've, uh, I'm playing with everything on the shelves, looking at everything, and I walk over and there were these cool – I've seen them before, but I don't know why. They just intrigued my brain at this time. But you know the little key rings you can get and um, they have like a retractable pen on it and you see like nurses and doctors and shit, they clip it on their belt. Anyway, I saw one of them, so – Obviously, my ADHD brain is like, I need to pull that. So I've pulled it once and I'm like, oh, that's that that was fun. That was thrilling. So I've pulled it again. And then I look at Nikita, she's still looking at shit. So then I go to pull it a third time. But I don't know why the fuck I did it. But I was like, I'm going to see how fast I can pull this thing out of the little retractable thing and then how fast it can suck back up. So I've pulled this thing. And as I've pulled it, it's ripped off the shelf and I don't know why. I freaked out and just let go and this thing has shot, like fallen out and because of the force of the retraction, it's like flown behind me and it slid underneath the shelving. But as it's done that, it's gone past an old man's foot and he's gone like, oh, what was that? And I was like, oh, it's just – and obviously at this stage I'm freaking the fuck out, feeling awkward as it is. And Nikita's looking at me because she heard the noise, but she's not coming to intervene because she doesn't want to get involved. So I'm like, oh, it's just one of these retractable pens. I accidentally dropped it. And this guy's like, oh, you better try find it. And I was like, oh, okay. Because uh, I was just going to obviously leave it to be under the shelving for eternity until they close up shop and find it in the future. So I've like had a half ass look under it and I'm like, oh, I can't see it. And he's like, oh, I'll have, to, I'll have a look then. And I'm like, and then I start to feel bad because this old bloke's like trying to lean down and look for this pen. And I'm like, oh, I'll just tell him when we pay. I'll just go, oh, I accidentally dropped a pen under the shelf and then they'll go get a stick or something. And he's like, oh, we, we can get it if we try. And I'm like, mate, it's all good. Like, they're going to get it. Anyway, he just would not fucking drop it. And Nikita, she like was embarrassed that I did it, but she found it so funny about how awkward I was being with this old bloke. Anyway, I'm like, we need to fucking go because I'm feeling awkward right now. And she's like, no, I've got other stuff to look at. And she legit, I feel like she did it on purpose, just spent the next 10 minutes dawdling around the store. And every aisle I went down, this old bloke was there just like staring a hole into my soul. And I was like, fuck. So my biggest fear was that I was going to get to the counter to pay for this shit. And this old bloke was going to be behind us. Luckily, it uh, didn't happen. But, uh, yeah, that was a bit of a bit of an awkward one. Um, the, other, the other thing that happened, and this fucking – I did not want to do this at all. So uh, we touched on it last week. Adrian got his uh, black eye, which is still looking quite dark. I saw him the other day. But um, that job was for a – uh, psychology clinic and with Westy's things that he's got going on he it's recommended that he goes to like a speech pathologist and a um, 
Oh, all these all these people, and he's been on the waiting list for a while now to go and see a psychologist, um, just because I don't know. I think the whole fucking NDIS shit's half a rort, but uh, they want him to do it, so sure, let's go. So he's been on the waiting list for a while, and coincidentally, I just got hired to do a reception area for a psychologist, and I was like, oh, okay, cool, and nothing clicked at this point. Landed the job, did the job, and the, there was one thing left that I had to go back and do. It was li- literally these little cable entries in the desk here. I had to go drill two more because they wanted some extras. So I've come home to get two more extra ones, and in that time, Nikita's like, oh, where was this? Like, what what was the job you went and did? And I'm like, oh, it's just a psychologist in, uh, in a Bean Lee. And she's like, oh, what's the name of it? So I told her. She's like, oh, my God, that's the psychologist that Westy's on a waiting list for. And I was like, oh, well, that's fucking awkward. And she's like, oh, no, that, that's great. Like, um, when you go back there, you can put in a good word and ask where we are on the waiting list. And I was like, no fucking way am I doing that. Because in my head, it sounds like I've now just done the job to try and chisel my son further up the waiting list, uh, which I obviously did not want to do. And Nikita's like, you have to do it. And I'm like, I'm not fucking doing it. So she's like, if you don't do it, I'm going to call them and be like, my husband is in your foyer right now and he doesn't want to ask you about our son and make you look like the worst dad. And I was like, you wouldn't. But uh, this uh, psycho woman that I married probably would do that. Um, So I've gone back in there and I've started to drill these things and they're standing there making small talk with me, which is cool. Um, And then I forget how it came up, but it somehow organically came up and I was like, oh, actually, my son is on your waiting list to come and see you guys. And they're like, oh, wow. And it was slightly awkward and they're like, let us see what we can do. They jumped on their computers and they're like, we've just moved him to the top of our list. And I just left there feeling dirty and disgusting that I've just hoard myself out to build a reception counter so my son can get to the top of a psychology list. Um, but little things you got to do, little things for those Finding Nemo moments where he runs after you to school. I guess it's uh, it's all worth it. Um, but, yeah, the uh, Wesley and I, I've spoken about it as well. We've got a little... Uh, gaming addiction going on between the two of us at the moment. And I've spoken before, my, it's heavily reliant on Fortnite, which is a very addictive game. Uh, still double in it, not as much as I was, but uh, still playing it probably once a day, which is not good. But uh, I found a new game to fill the void of all the time I'm not spending playing Fortnite, and that is... The hit game, Tetris, which is going to blow everyone's mind. Uh, If you haven't played Tetris in the last 10 years or so, go give it a crack. It's pretty fucking fun. Uh, I don't know what it is about... It's probably my autism ADHD, but just fitting coloured blocks into designated sections is a a fun time for me. That's a sick time. I, I reckon I could spend eight hours playing Tetris in... Without taking a break. Hot take. But yeah, go give it a crack. Um, yeah, I uh, I guess we should jump into my, my week of comedy since there's fuck all else to talk about without a guest or Adrian here. But um, had a couple of gigs this week, a couple of, couple of funny things happened, I guess. The, the first one, I, I'll, uh, I'll preface this by saying I did not have one... All of my all of my sets this week were mediocre. And I feel like so after each set, I text Nikita and I was like, bomb, bomb, bomb. Like every set to me is just a bomb. Even if I do pretty well. Like I have to fucking destroy to feel like I've had a good set. And uh because of that, almost every night I just Nikita goes, How'd you go? I'm like, oh bombed. And she's like, oh, so no one laughed? I'm like, no, people laughed. And she's like, well, it's not a fucking bomb then. But I feel like it's different when you're in the scene. Like you can feel when you're like people, I feel like people will almost politely laugh at anything in some rooms. And that's what I, 
that's what I feel like when I'm up there. And then I listen to the recording on the drive home because I record all my sets. And there's like, sounds like there's genuine laughter there. I'm like, maybe I was just too hard on myself. But anyway, uh, Monday night I was at the Boathouse Tavern down at Coomera. And it got revealed in the afternoon that uh, that they're pretty they're, – they were on uh, Australia's Got Talent, so they're called the Nelson Twins, uh, and they literally tour Australia nonstop. They're everywhere on social media. So uh, they're two two twins that get up there and they basically just roast each other nonstop. And they have jokes and shit as well, but their big stick is that yeah, they roast each other. And everyone was having medium sets, and they were on like fourth or fifth or something. And then I got put on after them on the lineup. I was like, oh, fuck. So these guys got up and in a, in a crowd that wasn't giving much to the other comedians, these guys had a fucking great set. Like they killed. And then I, I don't know why, I just assumed <laughs> I was going to ride on their coattails and have a, good, a sick set as well because the crowd was going to be on a high. But I feel like the crowd almost expected me to be like, the next tier up. So I've started my jokes and they're just like, they're getting little giggles and stuff, but nothing compared to what the Nelson twins were getting, which I guess comes down to like, like years into the game and shit like that as well, which is a big factor in it. But um, yeah, I had a mediocre set, I guess it was uh, again, listen to the recording. It was okay. Um, can't, uh, can't be too sad with it, but then I uh, followed that up with a Wednesday night gig at Pimp Mar Pavilion and I've been waiting for this. This is the first time it's happened, right? So got up, again, medium set, went okay. Uh, but after the gig, there was a guy, and he was not giving me much on stage. Like, he was pretty straight-faced the whole night. But then he came up to me after the gig and he goes, oh, your set was hilarious. I loved this joke, this joke, blah, blah, blah. And I've got a joke. It's a stupid fucking joke, but I've been opening on it lately because it's probably my quickest joke to a punchline I've got that isn't like a long story. And it's about like uh, getting an x-ray when I was at high school and at the top of the x-ray, like the x-ray was on my knees, but at the top of the x-ray you could see like an outline of the smallest dick you've ever seen, blah, blah, blah. And um, so this guy's come up to me at the end and he's like, you bit about the x-ray. He's, I'm like, oh, here we go. He's like, yeah, I was thinking about it all night. I think, uh, I think, I've got an idea for you. And I was like, oh, what is it? And he goes, my friend, I went to school with a friend and he went and got an x-ray and he found out that he had a tail. And I was like, oh yeah, I've heard stories like that. And he's like, yeah, so I think you should, I think you should change your joke so that you went and got an x-ray and when you got the x-ray back, you found out you had a tail. And I was like, huh, okay. Uh, and then, and then what? And he's like, uh, I don't know. I just thought it was cool to, say you had a, a tail on an x-ray and I was like all right no worries I'll uh and then I uh yeah I was like I'll, I'll make a note of it and I'll play around with the joke and he's like yeah okay hopefully I'll see you in another few weeks and and you've uh you've played with it a bit and I'm like oh my god I hope he does not come back to another gig and be like come up to me again and go I fucking I gave you some comedy gold why didn't you fucking use it but um yeah I Thursday night I got a late call up for – so I already had Chris Walters' gig locked in at the mix bar. Uh, so that was locked in. And I got a late call up before that gig to do Brown Snake at West End, which is – it's a fun room. I've done it a couple of times now. Um, and, yeah, always had fun there. So I was like, yeah, I should be able to chisel that in. Chris modified his lineup to make it work for me, which fucking super appreciative of. So – Went to Brown Snake, had a uh, had a pretty okay set again. Like again, listen back to the recording. I don't know why. I I honestly don't know why. Any psychologist listening to the podcast, tell me why the fuck I think while I'm on stage I'm not getting laughs, but then listen back to the recordings and there's heaps of laughter. Maybe I could uh, skip the queue at my son's psychology psychology appointments and I can. They can work out what the fuck's going on in my brain. Um, but, yeah, got up, had a decent set there, got straight off stage, jumped straight in my car, drove over to Chris Walters' gig. Uh, and that dude, for it being the first sort of night that he's put on, he nailed it. Like, stage was sick, 
uh, sound was sick, lighting was sick. And he, when he was on the podcast, we spoke about how he was just starting his photography company and things like that. So he was there the whole night, whole thing was filmed, whole thing was getting photos, things like that, which he's going to use for promotion down the track. But yeah, send me a couple of sneaky photos of me up there bombing. Um, but yeah, I, I say bombing. I didn't, I don't think it was a bomb. It wasn't great. I, Thursday night was bad for it in particular. And I came home and told Nikita this as well. I don't know why, but I was just like a, a stuttering, mumbling mess up there. Like words that I've said hundreds of times now on stage, which is, I was stuttering on them or I was just like, yeah, like fumbling them. I don't know what was up. Um, but yeah, I was bad for it on Thursday. So yeah, a couple of, couple of sick gigs there. Um, and I don't know, I noticed this, I don't know what your thoughts on this are, but both Thursday night gigs, I just like being, uh, like when the MC introduced me, they normally, they normally say like something to almost link you to them and to the crowd and like a small introduction, I guess you'd say. And I just like it when, uh, when people are like, oh, give it up for your next comedian, Jimmy Misson, blah, blah, blah. But uh, so Dusty Rich, who's a fucking hilarious comedian, if you haven't seen him, go check him out. He was the MC at Brown Snake and I'm getting ready to go on and <laughs> he introduces me and he goes, all right, everyone, get ready for the best 10 minutes of stand-up comedy you guys have ever seen in your life. And I was like, <laughs> like that threw me the fuck off. I'm like, this is not going to be the best 10 minutes anyone has ever seen in their lives. Um, so I don't know. I felt like I'm interested to know if as a crowd member, if you get an unrealistic expectation of what you're about to see, if something gets introduced like that, because um, yeah, I lucky, luckily enough, I have that short punchy x-ray joke. And I, as soon as I got him to laugh at that, I loosened up a bit, but I just felt tense, like living up to that expectation and then I got over over to the mix bar and James Matthews, who's another fucking hilarious comedian, um, he was the MC there and he introduces me. He goes, oh, this is one of my really good friends in the scene. Uh, he goes, uh, what did he say? He goes, you guys are going to love him. He's He's got some really funny stuff. It was just something like, again, just fucking pumping me up and I'm like, oh my God, I can't live up to these fucking high expectations. So uh, yeah, I don't know, just again. Hit me up, psychologist. Maybe I should get a psychologist on the show one day. If anyone knows anyone, uh, let me know. Uh, pause for drink break. That's the uh, that's the downfall of these solo podcasts. Is there's a bit of dead air every time I got to take take a sip. Um, but yeah, oh, while we're on the uh, while we're on the comedy comedy tangent, I guess we should probably address it. So there's been a couple of rooms that I have started or was going to start this year. Uh, we had our show at the Sporting Globe in December, um, which went okay. So I have made the call in the last couple of weeks to basically scrap both those gigs. Um, I just don't have the time or the effort that is required to put into running a room at the moment, which... Everyone says that when they run a room, like everyone thinks you just rock up to stage with a mic, uh, rock up to the venue with a microphone, start slinging your dick jokes, have a beer, go home. But yeah, just the amount of work that that goes in behind the scenes and things like that. And I just when I did that Logan Home one, like back when I did the Rum Distillery ones, and those shows just fucking went off. I think it's because at that time I had so much time. And so much effort that I wanted to put into it that I just made it work. Sold them out, blah, blah, blah. And then these ones in December, I had so much other shit going on with like family, starting the business, trying to get the podcast to the next level, trying to write new jokes, blah, blah, blah. Um, back to Cam Haynes, nobody works. Uh, nobody cares, work harder. So, um, but yeah, I guess it was a little bitch moment. So I've uh, decided not to carry on with running those rooms. I'm just going to keep jumping up to other people's rooms. Uh, and as I mentioned, I don't know if it was last week or a couple of weeks ago or something, I also want to try and get to some other cities or areas this year to to tell my jokes and uh, get my name out there a little bit more. So I've uh, touched base with a couple of rooms in yeah Sydney, Melbourne. Um, I'd love to get to Perth. There's a sick room over there, but it's just 
like the flight alone is like 500 bucks or something each way. And I'm like, fuck, that's, it's a hefty uh, chunk of change at the moment. But um, yeah, Sydney and Melbourne are definitely doable. Newcastle is fucking, the shit I've heard about that place is, yeah, I'm hoping to get a spot down there in the next month or two, if possible. Um, reached out to the venue, so see how we go. But yeah, just thought I'd touch base, uh, let everyone know not to expect any of my rooms popping up anytime soon. Um, there is potential. So I've, there's a comedian on the scene that I was talking to one night. I told him this and he lives near Mansfield Tavern and he's wanted to run a room for ages. He's actually spoken to me in the past about running a room. And when I announced Mansfield, he goes, oh, can I help you run it? And I was like, sure. So when I made this call, he was sort of one of the first people I asked if he would be keen just to take it over. So I'm not going to announce that he's doing it or anything like that, but he's now in discussions with the venue, things like that. So hopefully there is still comedy at Mansfield soon. Uh, Sporting Globe, not sure. I yeah, haven't recommended that to anyone. It will probably just fizzle away, but um, yeah, just sort of let you know so you aren't expecting anything. Uh, what else did I have on my, my little list here? This was – uh so. I pre-wrote, pre-wrote my list expecting Adrian to be here to bounce some shit off, but uh, yeah, you just got me. So we, since the start of the podcast, we've been heavily, we should, it should have been like a movie podcast at the very start, but I, did, I hated being pinned down to a niche. But uh, I've watched a couple of movies this week, which, well, actually in the last two weeks, some of them just didn't come up in last week's episode, so... I uh, I watched the new Saw, and I've been a a huge fan of Saw like since it first came out. I, it scares the fuck out of me because it's like a horror movie that like there's people in the world that actually kidnap people and torture them like that. So I'm like, it could actually fucking happen. But uh, it took a while for this Saw to get into it. Like it was probably half an hour and started until it started to get like a Saw movie. But when it started. It was fucking pretty insane, pretty gruesome. Uh, some of the shit they were doing on there, there is absolutely zero chance I could force myself to do that sort of shit. So if you haven't seen the new Saw and you've got an hour and a half to kill that you don't care what the fuck you watch, go check it out. But a better recommendation, I have not been this keen on a movie since my public display of affection for Top Gun 2 on this podcast I would challenge Top Gun 2 for my best movie I've ever seen for the uh, the new Kevin Hart movie on Netflix called Lift. Um, if you have not seen that one, go and watch it right now because it's the sickest fucking movie I've seen in ages. And it's – don't go into it expecting like a, a hidden twist or fucking anything like that. It's just your typical premises, right? Kevin Hart and his team are the, the biggest fucking – robbers in the world they they steal art money cars everything right anyway the cops are they basically track them down and shit and they say look you're going to jail your whole team's going to jail the only way you can not go to jail is if you steal all this gold from a multi-millionaire in europe but the only window we have to steal this gold is while it's in a plane up in the air so obviously the whole movie is putting together this elaborate plan to go and steal the gold out of a moving plane and just the uh, the lead up to it, the whole fucking action scenes and shit like that on top of Kevin Hart being one of the funniest cunts fucking ever. It's a, it's a sick movie. So even Nikita came off the back of it and she's like, that movie was fucking insane. So if you haven't seen Lyft, go check it out and let me know what you think about it. But uh, more back to more back to my lane. Nikita and I t- started the the new season of Love on the Spectrum yesterday. So it's uh, yeah, it's it's so funny without it trying to be funny, and not like funny in a mean way. Just like just the the rawness and realness that all like autistic people have. So we've spoken about it before. Westy has autism, but not to the level of like the autistic people on love on the spectrum, like just the shit that these people say and don't even think about, like 
for example, one guy goes on a speed dating thing, right? And he's heavily autistic and he's speed dating with these girls and he'll ask them a question. And if he doesn't like the question that they, uh, the answer they answer with, he'll look down at his piece of paper and put like a giant cross next to their name and then write the reason why he doesn't like them while they're sitting there still having a conversation with him. It was just like funny shit like that. Um, and then the producer has to come in between girls and he's like, are you guys, are you like writing why you don't like the girls while they're sitting right there? He's like, yeah, of course. And he's like, well, don't you think that would hurt their feelings? And he's just like starts banging his head. He's like, oh, my God, of course, I'm so stupid. Like just the way their brains don't think about that, like so innocent and pure sort of thing. But, um, yeah, there's another girl. Her boyfriend bought her like an all expenses paid to, trip to Africa to see like her favorite animals, a lion and shit like that. And she's like, oh, okay, cool. Like just plays it off as if it's not the biggest thing to ever happen in her life. And she just walks away. And her mom has to like pull her to the side. And she's like, like, you know, you're going to Africa. And she's like, oh yeah, like one day we'll go to Africa. And she's like, no, like the trip's booked. You're going to Africa like in the next week. And then she like, it starts to click for her. And like, yeah, again, we're, we're literally one episode in, so... Uh, I'm not going to recommend it yet, but if you've seen all the other seasons of Love on the Spectrum, then you're probably going to fucking love this one. Um, and then there was a couple of couple of music music news uh, update. Well, I don't fucking articles news articles. I was going to talk to Adrian about because we talk about music a little bit as well. I know fuck all about music. I just know what I like to listen to. So one of the biggest things that I stumbled across in the last day or two is. I uh, I like country music. I, I've sort of always liked country music. I was that weird kid at school where everyone was like, oh, I like everything except country. And I was like, well, I, I listen to country. Um, and I had to be that loser and adapt to sort of hip-hop country and things like that. But, yeah, uh, last 10 years or so really got right back into my country. And obviously one of the biggest country artists in the world right now is Morgan Wallen. And I didn't go see him last year when he came because it was just all the tickets got snatched up by like 16-year-old TikTok girls that do his, t- his dances on TikTok uh, and don't even listen to like his album tracks. But anyway, um, the dude is fucking like next level as an artist and he came out on his Instagram and basically a record label, when he first like was like, okay, I'm going to give this a, a red hot crack, moved to Nashville or wherever it was and signed with this record label, did, I think he said there was like 15, 16 songs or something that they'd put together or they just recorded basically for him to learn how to be a songwriter, learn the whole process of recording music, blah, blah, blah. And out of those 16 songs, he got one, which is one of his fucking top songs. It's called Spin You Around. Um, and it was one of his earlier songs that he released and just blew him up. And he said the rest of them were absolute dog shit of just him learning literally how to write songs and what, how he wanted his voice to sound and things like that. So he basically more or less put the rest of the songs in the bin, but the record label has obviously kept them on their file and his deal with them ran out or runs out this week or in the next couple of weeks. So they have put together an album with his name on it and they're releasing those 16 songs as a Morgan Wallen album. And now he's obviously trying to get to his fans and be like, that is not, obviously it's it's him, but it's not something that he's releasing out of his own will, um, which is a pretty fucked up thing to do to someone. uh, Just so the, the grimy little record labels can make a dollar. But yeah, it's pretty fucked up. So if you haven't seen that story, go and dig a deep, bit deeper yourself. Um, but he's basically urging everyone, which is a weird thing for an artist to beg his fans, but he's more or less asking everyone not to listen to the new album that's coming out with his name on it because he's not proud of any of those songs and doesn't want any of them listening to listen to. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a fucked up thing. Like I know the only other similar thing that I've – heard about was uh when taylor swift got fucked by her record label so obviously again she's like she probably would take the cake for the biggest artist in the world at the moment 
Like she's she's doing like a stadium every night, which is insane. Um, but yeah, her record label basically stole all her music and she went back and re-recorded all her songs and released all her albums as uh, Taylor's version, which is a pretty pretty uh, cool way to stick it to the man. Um, so obviously all her fans are now just listening to Taylor's version of the songs rather than the originals. Uh, there was actually a sick, well, not a fucking, <laughs> wait, take that back. Edit that out. Uh, there was a story come out over the last couple of days. I'm sure you guys have all seen it by now, but uh, involving Taylor Swift, who has more pull in the world than anyone, I reckon. Anything she doesn't want out there just disappears. It, probably anyone as well. There's probably, there's probably blood on Taylor Swift's hands and we just don't know it. And we're just shaking it off. <laughs> Play on words. Anyway, um, we all know AI is taking over the world at the moment. So somebody, some website got AI to do these computer generated images of uh, basically like Taylor Swift porn, I guess you'd call it. Uh, and yeah, it's apparently there's a video as well. I haven't seen the video. I've seen a couple of the photos come through on stupid group chats and things like that that I'm on. Um, but they're pretty they're pretty intense. But most it ha- it happens to most celebrities, and it's happened since I was a teenager. Like there used to be websites where it was like see Jessica Alba nude or like whoever a big celebrity was when I was younger, and it'd just be stupid like photoshopped photos of like their face on some random naked chick's body but these ones are like hyper realistic like almost look like taylor swift anyway so she has now threatened legal action against this website that's leaked these photos and things like that but i don't know i don't know if she if there's any sort of legal footing behind that because surely some of these other celebrities would have got in and given their two cents on their leaked fake nudes and things like that. But I don't know. Like I said, if Taylor wants something gone, it's probably going to be gone in the next week or two. She might even delete AI altogether. Taylor Swift could be the uh, the saviour we've all been looking for and she'll just get rid of AI. Chat GPT will be no longer because of because of Swifty. But, um, yeah, I think that's probably... That's probably all I'll cover. The rest of it on here is absolute dog shit that I just would have fucking ranted with Adrian and probably pissed him off about how stupid it all was. But, um, yeah, I'll... Oh, what? Here's a crazy fucking thing. I'll leave you on this one. While I've been running and doing my little ice baths, uh, sometimes I've been turning my music off. And obviously, as we've found from this episode, my brain's all sorts of fucked up. And if I've got music or something playing, then I just... I stay out of my own brain and I don't think fucked up thoughts. But while I've been running in in the cold bath recently, I've been like pausing my music and just letting my brain have a bit to think, hoping that it'll come up with like new premises or a little spin on a joke and things like that, which it has. Um, But it's also been thinking of a lot of fucking stupid things. And something that popped into my brain the other day and I said it to Nikita and she's like, you're a fucking idiot. But I thought it was cool. So you hear everyone talk about like the olden days, right? Like you talk about, oh, it's so rough in the 40s and the 50s and things like that. But it only dawned on me while I was running the other day that we're now in that next phase of like year cycles that we're now in like the 20s. So in like 2090, people are going to be looking back on this time like we did for the 1920s, which fucking blew my mind. Like, yeah, that... We're now in the future olden days. (laughs) I wish I didn't end on this. That was the stupidest thing I've ever just fucking said out loud. But I hope that makes sense to someone. Like we're living in the 20s when it would have been crazy to be living in the 1920s. But uh, there's a little thought for you guys to to, uh, think about for the rest of the week, a little bit of head noise for you. So I'm sure we'll be back to our regular programming. Hopefully I've got someone else to talk to next week so I don't have to give you weird facts about living in the future. Uh, but yeah, appreciate you all, you all listening. If you want to share it around, tell a mate about the, uh, the podcast, things like that. Appreciate all you guys sharing it and helping us grow that little bit more. And we'll, uh, see us next week. 